And so what I'm going to start doing is just bulking out the general shape of the torso. This is smaller than I like to draw, but I think you guys probably know if you've used color pencil before, it's not a fast material and it does take time to layer. So I would just say with color pencil, you don't want to draw tiny, but it's probably not a good idea to try to do like a two foot tall drawing. Like that's not going to be so easy to do. And what I'm trying to do is to block in the placement of the head, the essential form of the torso. I'm just trying to figure out size. I'm not even trying to do anything else because I think actually that takes a while for people to get the drawing to the size that they actually want it to be because I do want to spend some time just acknowledging the arms. I don't think the arms have to be such a big deal, but I do want to make use of that sweet deltoid on the left hand side. That deltoid is so pronounced and I really like it. So I definitely want to keep that in. Okay. So again, this is just a scale thing, not really doing much beyond that. And definitely some placement of the head. I'm not going to draw the whole head, but I do want to include the chin at the very least. So that way the upper part of the figure doesn't feel so confusing. Okay. That's the very beginning. And I know a lot of you guys cannot see what I just did. That's exactly the way it's supposed to be. You should not see this clearly. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do now is break down for you guys, some of the anatomical structures that I like to do. So for example, actually the very first thing we're going to be looking at is this thing called the center line. And all of this information is actually in this video, which is part three of anatomy for artists. So if you haven't watched that, take a look, but really that's the center line. It's this line that comes down the front and it really dictates the angle of the figure you can see here. This is from the greatest showman. And let's take a look at some Wolverine images because he's got a very pronounced center line. So this is the first thing actually that I'm going to put into my drawing because the center line, it just makes things more organized. Okay. So if I come back here, one thing you guys should notice about the center line is it's not straight. Okay. The center line, it sort of comes inwards and then it actually goes like this. It sort of sticks out a little bit. And then this is like about where the belly button is and then it goes down. Okay. So the center line, while you might think about it as being straight, it's not straight. Okay. Depending on what the structures are doing, it's going to do something else. So here it comes down the center inwards, goes outwards where the stomach is, and it goes straight down again. Okay. You've got to have a center line. If you guys don't have a center line, I can't help you. <laughs> so do a center line. Okay. All right. So let's get the center line in. And then the next structure that I want to try to find is actually clavicles. Okay. This is basically why people wear strapless dresses so they can show off their clavicles. Okay. So look for the clavicles. They're the collarbones, which are right here. And if you guys look clearly here, you can see that clavicles are round. Okay. They're not straight across. Sometimes they look that way, but they definitely are not. And if you guys take a look at my skeleton, you'll see that more clearly. Okay. So let's put in the clavicles. The model that we're looking at, he's like tilted downwards a little bit. So you can see, you actually don't see a lot of his neck. His neck is almost not there, but the clavicles are definitely present. And I do want to put a little slice of the neck coming down. And then this is the deltoid, which is this muscle here. I know we have not gone over muscles yet, you guys. I will get to it. Just, wow, there's so much stuff we have to cover. Okay, so now you have clavicle, center line. I started a bit of the deltoid and let's go from there. Okay. Let me just do a little bit more preliminary stuff and then I'll take a break and I'll look at the chat, answer your questions and let me know what's going on. So if you have a question, something you want to know about, ask me in the chat and I'll get to it. Okay. It's just, I can't read the chat and draw at the same time. Okay. So let's look at, these are the pectoralis majors and I'm really trying to look at it from a pretty, I guess, geometric point of view. And I feel like I really want to show the bulge of the form. 
Okay, so this is the contour on the right. I'm actually gonna bring down the stomach a little bit more. I mean, what helps me is to exaggerate. So if I see something that's round, I make it rounder than I think it should be. I actually rarely try to make it like the image because if I do that, I get in trouble. It usually ends up looking kind of boring. I don't know, like, like if I don't add my own spin on it, Oftentimes I, I end up with like a watered down version, which I don't like very much. Okay, so I do like to exaggerate a bit. And then over here, this is important. Like this is a, an area of overlap. So do you guys see, this is like a little fold of skin and then see how the side of the torso, it's behind the pectoralis major. Okay, so here are the ribs and we'll go over a couple key muscles. Like this is, the external oblique, which is, uh, if some of you guys have heard the term love handles, that's your external oblique, okay? And also I am gonna put in the belly button. The belly button's sort of weird. You wouldn't think it's that important, but it's actually really helpful because it's on the center line. It's just another landmark. So it's really, really helpful to do that. Okay, let me just put in a little bit more, maybe just in the neck so I don't feel totally lost and keeping the drawing so, so simple, guys. Actually, let's move up the chin. So yeah, I know a lot of people will say, I can't see anything you're drawing. I'm like, that's the way it should be. If you guys can see what I'm drawing, it means I'm drawing too dark. And I'm gonna put in a little bit of the hair, which swoops down like this, and maybe just a little indication of the mouth and a little form of the nose. I'm not trying that hard, but I do want something in there. I suspect those are too small right now, but whatever, we'll fix it later. You have to have the mindset that we'll fix it later. <laughs> That's really what it comes down to. You can't try to knock it out of the park the first time. Okay, so actually I am seeing now that if that's the case, I actually need to move up the shoulders because he's like hunched over, right? He's not standing upright. So actually this muscle up here, which is called the trapezius, I know we haven't gotten over it, I know. It's higher up. And that also means that this one on this side is higher up. So I've only been working on this for like, what, five minutes, and I'm already fixing a lot of different things. Okay, so over here, maybe a little indication of that deltoid, and then maybe make this pectoralis a little bit less round. This one's actually pretty round. And then a little indication here, th this is like where the rib cage is, okay? Because one thing that I definitely see with anatomy, I, th I think one of the reasons people have trouble with it is people don't draw in the figure. They just trace the figure and you can't do that. You gotta work from the inside and push yourself out. So that's why even at this early stage, I'm drawing inside the figure. Like here's the deltoid and here's a little more indication of the clavicle. And so you guys can see, I don't spend a lot of time on the edges. I spend more time inside the figure trying to articulate some of those forms. Let's get a little bit more and maybe a little indication of a rib in here. This one's more pronounced. And actually his external oblique is pretty clear cut. So I'm just gonna add that. And then maybe just make this arm bigger because I made it way too small, okay? So remember, make changes, okay? Don't draw it once and tell yourself that's good, it's not. Not good enough. <laughs> well, for me, it's not good enough. You can lower your standards if you want, but I'm not going to because I'm compulsive that way. Okay, let me take a quick break and I'm going to show you guys. This is the stream, although we also have two streams. This is the one that talks about the front of the torso. And we also have this one, which shows the back of the torso. So really we're taking big shapes and breaking them down. All right, let's see what people are talking about. Hi, hi, says Clara got me addicted to clavicles and John Singer Sargent. I know, I actually have to like try to not show John Singer Sargent because I feel bad when I do. I'm like, I shouldn't talk about him so much, but he's so good. And when we want to talk about portraiture, it's hard to not mention him. Jade Leaf says there's this drag queen slash male model called Milk who is the weirdest but most amazing clavicles I've seen. They go right above his shoulders. Ooh, I, I need to do a Google search for that. That's, that's really cool. Awesome. 
Looks like we've got a, a clavicle proof, which is in here. Awesome. Yes. And David, yes, the reference photo is in the Discord. I also put it in the chat and in the video description below. So you don't even have to be in the Discord to get access to that reference photo. That's totally fine to get it here. Thank you for your compliment on my haircut. See, like it's very funky. <laughs> I like it because I don't have to do anything. That's actually the best part of this hairdo. And let's see what else people are saying. 10,000 Crows says, so nice to finally relax and just watch Professor Lou draw at the end of a long day. Guys, I need this, okay? Because I don't want to say that I had a bad day because I didn't. I just sort of had like a meh, right? It's like enough to annoy you a little bit, but you feel bad complaining because it's just sort of silly. So when I was looking at this, I was like, oh, I get to draw at the end of the day. <laughs> that is wonderful. That one person says, I see colored pencil as a fast material. It could just be how fast I work, but I've always seen colored pencil as a fast material. What makes it seem slow? Well, that one person, it depends on how you use it because people definitely use colored pencils in so many different ways. I guess what I meant by it being slow is if you wanna do like a full out, rich, colorful rendered piece, that takes a while. I use colored pencils all the time to do gesture drawing. Like some of you guys may have seen our cat drawing tutorial. I love it for that. But I think if you want to really finish something and make it more painterly, definitely it takes a while because you can't get it on the page as fast. Like I think about charcoal as being super fast. Like charcoal is so fast that I actually feel like charcoal gets ahead of me. Like the charcoal's already done something my brain has not caught up. And so that's one thing I like about charcoal, but it's also hard because I feel like it's difficult, but with colored pencil, it also feels hard as well because sometimes the material doesn't move as fast as I want it to. So the results aren't as quick. So yeah, it's like nothing really lines up. Okay, so let's see what else people are saying. Uh, Kate Rowe says, I find colored pencils painfully slow. Okay, and let's see. So Tainley says, colored pencils are like an hour per square inch. <laughs> yeah, basically. And I believe somebody here said that they can't see the reference photo. Well, what I'll be doing is I'm gonna be showing you guys a lot of these references while I'm talking to you. So that's why I'm recommending you go down to the video description and download the photo from Flickr because sometimes there's other things that I wanna reference. So that way you're not having to draw off my screen. Plus. The photo I uploaded is like really high res. So you can like zoom way in and see a lot of detail, which will be really, really fun. Let's see, Na Concreto says, I really need more of anatomy class. My drawings are very not good. Well, you're in the right place. <laughs> so this is really great. Kate Rose says, the only way I can get looser while drawing is by making it really messy. It's gotta start somewhere, right? I mean, I don't think anybody starts a drawing in a super neat way. I think so much of it is meandering and oh, maybe this, maybe that. It's like a big blob. That, that's what your drawing is. It's like a big hunk of silly putty. It's got to start somewhere. Okay, let's get back into this. Let me put the reference photos back. Okay, there they are. So let's get going. Okay, I think what I want to do now is I'm going to try and solidify some of the line work, but I don't want to spend too long on that because I want to have enough time to work in the, the shading because really that, that's what takes a long time with this process is building the color. So I don't like to spend too much time in this area, but I do want to really analyze some of the forms, like especially in the neck. This is the pit of the neck. Okay, that's a pretty important form. It's also where the clavicles come together. And I wanna show this, is that the sternocleidomastoid? Yes, yes it is. Okay, here it is, I found it. This is the sternocleidomastoid and it comes down. And then here you really can see the, the roundness of the clavicles, like clear as day, awesome. Okay, and then here's the edge of the deltoid. And I guess the hair is covering that a little bit, but I can definitely get in there. Actually, I should make my reference photo just a little bit smaller for myself. 
um, because actually this cell code, this cell code's bigger than I thought it was. Okay, let's make that more significant. And then there's this like trail of skin. And then look at this, you guys. There's like a form here, and then there's another form here, and then this comes down. So this contour, which some people would just say, oh, it's just straight down. It's not, it's three lines. One, two, three, okay? That is very important. Okay, and then here I'm gonna show the bicep coming down and then look at how this muscle is behind it. Okay, so you guys will hear me talk about this a lot, about how some muscles are under others, some are in front. And so this one comes down and then this one comes behind like that. It's a little too straight. I think I wanna lean it more this way. Okay. So we have that, and now I really want to solidify the rest of the neck. So that muscle comes out, and this clavicle is really long. So let's make that one a lot more prominent. Push the deltoid over, and this here too, there's like a fold of skin that comes down. Okay, and then this is like that little flap of skin. So even there, I'm starting to show that. Okay, let's do a little bit more on the face. I don't, again, I don't want to do too, too much because really this is about the torso. This is not really a portrait what I'm doing today. Okay. But the mouth is important as a landmark. So I want to get that in there and then maybe a little indication of the bottom section of the nose like that, and then show some of the skin folds. And actually here, this, this is like a little bit of the jawbone. It's not that clear, but it's definitely there. And then I just really need the chin to be more prominent and have this muscle come across more. So here I, I'm starting to like subdivide a little bit more. And I do want to hint at a little bit of the ear. I, I know that seems silly because it's like, it's barely in there, but again, it's like, it's a landmark. It's, it's helping me find other things that are going on. Let me get the tilt of the mouth a little bit more dramatic. Maybe this form and a little bit more hair. Okay, I know I'm spending too much time up there, but um, I need to get that going. Also, I need to put in, I'm not gonna say this word because it might get me demonetized. Let's just say it rhymes with stipple. Let's put in the what rhymes with stipple <laughs> into <laughs> the drawing. And the whole thing about these is that they point out, okay? They do. I, I know it sounds strange. Sometimes people just stick them in the middle. That's not true. They go out. That's what you gotta think about, okay? All right, I think I'm almost ready for my rug of tone. And what I wanna do, the first color I'm gonna put down, it, it's not even the color I'm gonna use. It's just like a base area, okay? So let me just take in this color. Actually, you know what? I want a brighter color. Maybe I'll use something more like this. This has a little bit more red in it. And so again, like this is where the build up, it just takes time. Like you have to just build up the color. So I'm just throwing in where I see the shadows. Really simple. I mean, I'm really just coloring it in right now, which I don't recommend in general when you're doing the more complicated stuff. But in the beginning, you kind of need that. Like some of this is just grunt work, honestly, with colored pencil. Like you're not really doing a lot of refined work until the very end. Like right now, I'm just trying to get this area of tone in here. And also another thing to think about with color pencil that I think a lot of people don't consider enough is basically the pressure. See, th this is actually very related <laughs> to the Procreate tutorial when Jordan was trying to explain to me like, look, you don't have to worry about setting the opacity because you can just use the physical pressure of the Apple pencil. And that's really what I'm doing right now is I, I'm thinking about, okay, well, how hard am I pressing? Because I, I need to put something down that's substantial enough that it's actually gonna do something for me. Because if you go too light, not a lot is gonna happen. And actually this shadow sort of goes in this direction, but you don't have to be very precise about it right now. This is just, you're laying out that basic rug, okay? All right, there's not a lot of shadow on this side, but I'm just gonna fill a little bit here. And actually there's a lot of shadow here, like this. 
And by the way, if you guys have not checked out our Flickr page, definitely go take a look because I actually posted photos of Goblin Valley, that like weird mushroom place <laughs> that I did my Utah watercolor tutorial. At. I know some people were wanting to draw that landscape. So I posted some of those photos and hopefully you guys will have fun with that. You know, I'm already seeing something that needs help. So if you guys see this area here, I made this too high. So I'm going to go back in and fix that before I totally forget. So actually this is like all the way down here and then this comes out more. So I'm just fixing that. Make those changes guys. Okay. Let me know who is doing tone right now and who is still doing line. You don't want to spend too much time online. You got to move on. Okay. Because some of the stuff, like, I think a lot of drawing, it's like people spend a lot of time fussing over things that honestly don't have that much of a bearing because like, look at this. Okay. I just spent all that time working that, but now I put tone over it and now those lines are not very visible. And so that's why I feel like when people like get all precious about a drawing in the beginning, I'm like, yeah, but you're going to end up going over a lot of that stuff. And then it's like all that time you spent trying to make it look so good is, is sort of moot. And so that's why I'm like, you know what? It's, it's better to just get into it. Just dive in. You can always come back and resurrect some of those areas. Okay. All right. So now what I want to do next, because the thing is, here's the thing. Do you guys notice how in the reference photo, the background is white? Can anybody guess why that might help you see color better? Because I didn't have to shoot this photo on a white sheet of paper behind the model, but I did. Can anybody guess why I might have decided to do that? Because it's a pretty deliberate choice and it helped me a lot. So see if you guys can figure that out in the chat why I would want a white blank sheet back there. Okay. So that's the basics right there. And now what I'm going to do is let's see, what color should I use? I think I want something pretty light. And now I'm going to color in really light the highlighted areas because actually who, who guessed I'll see, I'll give you guys another minute in the chat to guess why the background in the reference photo is white why it's not black or something more dramatic and obvious and what that might have to do with color. Let's see if you guys can figure it out. Emily says white acts as the neutral, allowing us to perceive color better. Lahona says no color influence from the background. Dreamy Lizard says Clara, that's so difficult. That's the whole point. <laughs> do you guys think I'm here to make everything easy? No way. <laughs> Drawing is really hard. <laughs> Seven Angelic says, did it have anything to do with the reflected light? It did not. Karen says, because your paper is white. Nope, that's not it actually. The reason the paper is white is because it will get you to see the color more clearly because picture this, if the background was black, probably a lot of you guys would skip out on the color of the highlights and you would just say, oh, the highlights are white because they're very bright compared to the black. But the thing is, does everybody see how even the brightest highlights on the figure right now, they're darker than the white background. And if you have a black background, that's not going to be the case. So actually I found that when I started drawing figures with white backgrounds, it got me to really appreciate the more subtle shifts of tone in the highlighted area that I used to just leave white. Right. And so it, it's sort of like a nice little trick that you can play with um, your drawing. Okay, let me get in a little bit more tone in here. Like guys, nothing is happening right now. This is like, you're just shoveling dirt. Like this is such grunty work. And, and this is where colored pencils a lot of work because this is not something that happens fast. Like if I was using charcoal, I just would put it down in like two seconds. This actually does take time and it, it does hurt your arm after a little while if you've been doing it. Okay, so maybe a little bit more down here. Okay. So does everybody see how the basic strategy is that the skin is darker than the entire background, which says that no part of this figure should be the white of the page. It should all be color. So you are forced to put down color everywhere. Okay. <laughs> this is a great 
comment from David. We're going to have to use this as a, a slogan. Who said art prof was easy? Sure, it's free, but not easy. You see, that's the trade-off. You know, you guys going to get the stuff for free. I'm going to make you work. That's the big difference. Okay, so I'm going to build this up a little bit more because a lot of this is layering one color over another color over another color, especially for skin tone. Like people are always asking me, they're like, well, how do I do skin tone? Which is the right mixture? Tell me which colors to mix. And honestly, it's not one color. It's, it's like color over a color over another color. And by the way, you guys, let's see how far I get with this. But it's quite possible that if I feel like I want to go, or if you guys want me to go further, I might do a second stream on this because again, the, the material is just time consuming. It takes time. Okay. I don't like this arm. I think I didn't tilt it enough. So I'm actually going to make that more to the left. And again, I'm not big into specifics. Like a lot of the times actually on our channel, I get a lot of comments like, people who will say like, there is one that was great. It was like, the nose is too high. The eye should be to the left. The mouth is a little bit too far to the right and your ear is too low. It was just like one thing after another. I just was like, who cares? I don't care. Like, <laughs> it doesn't matter. I mean, like art is not about replication. It's not about accuracy. It's not about any of those things. And I think about the reference photo is just a launching pad. It's like a place to get started, but that's it. Like I am not after accuracy here. And I think a lot of people don't realize that. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna beef up the shadows a little bit more dramatically. So I actually pretty like this sort of like a rosy burnt sienna. And what I'm doing now is I'm building up so it's a little bit darker because now of course the shadow is harder to see. But I do think with color pencil and chalk pastel, it is good to build thin to thick. Like if you start thick with colored pencil, it's really hard. So I get a little bit more conservative where it's like, it's like a slow build. Like you don't try to nail down the density of color in the first layer. You do it slowly over time. And that's pretty important. Okay. Totally looks like a blob. That's okay. But see, the other thing too, though, is I feel like <laughs> colored pencil gives you an excuse. You're like, oh, I'm not done yet. This is fine. But with charcoal, it's like it, it sort of does start to look like something pretty fast. And I feel like I have an excuse <laughs> when it comes to color pencil. Oh my gosh, it's not done yet. It needs more time. Okay, let me build that up a little bit more dramatically. Okay, so I would say that's a pretty good start. And what I'm going to do is basically from here on, I'm going to fluctuate between line and tone. And really this is subdividing guys. It's like getting the big shapes, getting to the smaller shapes. And I'm going to play with density as well, but not right away because this is too much setup stuff that has to happen. Okay. So we have our rug. Like to me still, the, the drawing is not started yet. Like this is still, putting out the gravel, like nothing really exciting. All right. I want to take a look at a couple of questions people have. Uh, so I tainly says, can you erase watercolor pencils? I know you can't really erase Prismacolor. Not really. These are watercolor pencils. So if you guys look at the set that I have, you can see it says watercolor pencils, but honestly, I don't really use them for watercolor. I mean, I guess I could, but I just like these for just plain colored pencil. But yeah, there is this one eraser that Tombow makes that has sand in it. And that one's okay, but still it's like, it's a aggressive enough eraser that if you erase too hard, you can actually pick off some of the pulp on the paper, which I don't like either. So my whole deal is like, okay, I guess I just can't erase. And so that's where this mindset of like the slow build incrementally is a, a safer way to go about doing that. All right, let's see what else is going on in here. Scott says, I love that deep shadow in the chest. Guys, a reference photo is everything. Like if I have a crummy reference photo and the lighting is really flat, I, I almost would rather not draw. Honestly, it's that bad. And so you guys probably noticed that the photos on our Flickr page, it's not an accident that the lighting is really good. It's, it's done that way on purpose. And so it's really 
challenging. If, if you don't have a good reference photo, it's almost like you're screwed from the get-go, which is not that great. Okay. Pam Pame Bravo says, I was waiting for the live with colored pencils. Love having my whole color palette and being overwhelmed through all the options for some reason. It is fun. I mean, guys, what is not fun about a giant pile of colored pencils? This is only half of them. I mean, it's nice. It's nice because really, here's the thing. There, there's sort of like two ways of making color, okay? There's like painting where you're taking blobs of paint, you're mixing them together, you're blending them. And this is not the same thing. This is layering colors. The colors are pre-made. There's no mixing, but you have to put one over another over another to create those different mixtures. So that's sort of another way to think about making color. And Scott says, would you recommend drawing in opposing directions if you eventually want a flat or even colored pencil render? I mean, I recommend that no matter what. If you want something really gestural and messy, or if you want something full out rendered, I just think it's more interesting because I feel like when I see colored pencils and everything's going in the same direction, that's a little bit boring, but again, it depends. I mean, I've seen Da Vinci drawings where he's just going in the same direction. I think it's a stylistic choice. It's, it's a taste thing. It's not that one is necessarily better than another. And that one person says, you can't be overwhelmed until you have nearly 200 colored pencils. Yikes. Okay, that I don't need. However, I do need 96 brush pens. That's kind of awesome. So yeah. Okay, let's go back in. And what I'm going to do now is just solidify and get more specific about some of the line work. Because as you can see, I sort of annihilated all the work that I did to get going. And I'm going to try to bring out um, some of these other areas. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my pencil grip because although this helps me do the rug of tone, it does feel a little bit, what's the word, stiff? Because you'll notice my wrist doesn't do anything. So if I do this and I hold it sort of like this, as opposed to like this, like we don't want an iron grip. If I draw like this, this is going to help me see those forms a little bit better. God, I totally annihilated this the snack, shoot, see, that that's why you guys don't work so hard at the beginning to make it look good. Like it's really just not necessary. So right now I'm gonna pick it up a little. I'm gonna draw a little faster. Actually, I don't like that color. I feel like I need something more mild. And you guys might've noticed as well, I don't use black. I don't use the super ultra dark colors. I mean, I know a lot of you guys really want me to do a chalk pastel, soft pastel um, tutorial, and I'm going to do that at some point. But really, that's sort of the number one piece of advice when you're drawing with colored media is save those blacks for the very end. Like if you want to put black into your drawing, do it last. Like black is like literally the last thing that you're going to add. You're not going to do it sooner. And so you guys will see, like I'm using a dark brown here, but I'm not pressing that hard. And so it doesn't come down as being that dark. But yeah, just really guys, chill. Chill on those black, you don't need them. You don't need them remotely as much as you think you do. They're just not necessary. Okay, now in here, I do wanna articulate because they're these beautiful skin folds that I just think are lovely. And I want them to be more prominent um, because here's the thing, it's like in the beginning of the drawing, it's so generic, it's like styrofoam body. But now I can start to actually add in some of the sections that make the image more specific to the individual. Oh, and actually I gotta move this down too. I feel like this needs to bulge a little bit more. I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to pick up my pace because I don't feel that loose yet. I don't know, who here feels like they still need to warm up and who's like, yeah, I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm not ready to go yet. I, I need to like get around. I mean, typically speaking, I would not normally just start like this. Most of the time I actually would spend some time like doing some gesture drawings, like just warming up a little bit. Cause I do find it hard to just dive into a finished piece. Let's put in the rhymes with stipple, which is right here. And yeah, like I had these videos that had 
that stand, you know, where they're like not suitable for certain advertisers. Like, like they'll still keep it on. It's just certain advertisers don't like it. And so I had this one and I was like, I don't get it. I was like, oh, butt crack. Okay. <laughs> I was like, it's got to be the butt crack that does it. I read somewhere that that's the difference between an R rating and PG-13. It's a butt crack. Like, if you can't see the butt crack, it's PG-13. But if you can, it's an R rating. I feel like I saw some, I feel like it was some interview with Robert Pattinson or something. And he was talking about the butt crack and how that made a difference <laughs> in the Twilight movies and what um, what rating it got. Oh, God, those movies were terrible. <laughs> Mostly because of Kristen Stewart. I found her character so annoying. <laughs> confess, it's time to confess, you guys. Okay, did you watch Twilight? But, but, but it's not just did you watch Twilight, did you watch all four? Because I oh, could only get through one. I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> this is really, really painful. This is just too much. <laughs> it's confession time. I need to know. I need to know who here <laughs> spent, what is it, eight hours of your life <laughs> on those movies? <laughs> oh, my God. So, anyway. All right. Ah, I don't like... The wines I'm making, I, I feel like they're, they feel kind of dead. They feel dead. Okay, I, I gotta, what's the word? I gotta make this more active. It, it doesn't feel exciting yet. I gotta make this exciting. Okay, so what I'm gonna do to do that is I'm gonna get a little crazier. I actually moved down the belly button. Do you guys see that? It was over here, so. <laughs> I wanna know, okay, who who willingly watched all four movies. It's one thing if you were like forced to, you know, <laughs> like that doesn't really count in my opinion, but you know, sometimes you can't help it. Sometimes you got a friend who's like, I oh, gotta see, blah, blah, blah. Actually, I think the dumbest part of those movies was when Robert Pattinson was a little spark. Like, I'm like, come on, that's not a, that's not a vampire thing. You want, you know, it's a good vampire series of True Blood was really good. That was a great show. I mean, it got kind of crappy at the end, but it was mostly a good show. I, I like that show. But, uh, yeah. Okay, let's do more work. I feel like over here, there's actually quite a bit. So what I'm going to try to do is maybe exaggerate some of this stuff. I don't know. I just feel like my drawing is so boring right now. But then again, maybe I'm just getting judgy. And maybe I'm just... <sighs> who, who here has judged their drawing? Who here has been like, ah, <laughs> you're not good enough for me? <laughs> and then, yeah, because it's my fault that it's not good. <laughs> right? Can't blame it on the drawing. The drawing has no license here. It's it's whatever you turn it into. Okay. All right. Um, oh, shoot. I think I put the chin. I think the chin should actually be over here. So let's move that over. It's a strange pose because he's like bending down a little bit and his head is also a little twisted. So it's not really the easiest pose to make sense of right now. And I'm trying to like deconstruct this like neck area a little bit better. And actually, if I do that, that means the mandible, the jawbone is all the way over here. And that also moves sternocleidomastoid over here. Anna Banana says, my teacher worships Edward Cullen. Really? Oh dear. I'm sorry. Komodo Dragon says, I couldn't even watch half of one. And W315 says, I confess I watched the first one, read the book too, but both a friend let me hers because she wanted me to read and see it. See, I'll excuse that W315 because that's like peer pressure. You know, it's like you didn't do it on your own accord. I don't know. I was sort of hoping because I like vampire movies. I was like, maybe it'll be one of those like, it's so bad, it's good movies. You know, those movies where they're just so cringy that it's just awesome. But this one was just cringy. I just was like, oh, man. I don't know. Most of it's Kristen Stewart's fault. Poor character. <laughs> so, okay. Anyway, let's get in there. Oh, I still feel like it's boring. Maybe it's because I didn't get the tilt as much as I wanted to. I don't know. It's hard. What I'm going to do right now, everybody should do this, okay? Get back and look at your drawing from a distance and just squint. See what it is. And I think what it is, I don't know, I'm still squinting. I think it's something's funky about my jaw. It's just really weird looking. I gotta put in the mouth too, because I'm, I'm getting really distracted by this stuff. Because here's the thing, guys, I would rather put down something that looks bad than nothing. 
because I think it would be, be very easy to skip doing these lips. Tell me in the chat, are you drawing the mouth? Or do you have an empty egg for a head? Tell me, tell me the truth. <laughs> I have to say, you guys are pretty good at telling me the truth. Like when I was teaching in the classroom, it's pretty easy, like you can't really hide, but online you can, you can totally hide from me if you want. <laughs> yeah, I gotta get, bulgy, bulgy, that is the word of the day, okay. I gotta exaggerate. Bulge you there, push that out, and maybe pull the chin more this way. And then the mouth, I think it's a lot more curved than I thought it was. And that actually brings this crease down a lot lower, and then this one should get a little higher, okay? So tell me, who, who here is not dealing with all your landmarks, okay? You gotta have the ear, put in a little touch of the hair. Don't leave that stuff out, okay? It's, it's gonna come back to bite you, trust me, okay? See, like my hair does not look that great, but it's there, like I know it's there, okay? CVPA says, how am I just finding this? This is amazing. Well, I'm so glad you guys found us. Really cool, I'm so glad you guys are here. Let's see, what else are people saying? Let me go up a little bit. What are people talking about? <laughs> Seven Angelic says, haha, I couldn't even get past the first chapter of Twilight. And Michelle says, I watched the first two, but I was dragged there. See, I don't know. There, there's got to be a population of people who go there on purpose, but I don't know. Maybe you guys are not <laughs> confessing. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's see what else people are saying. Raw Nux says, I always judge my drawings but then I toss them off and look at them after a week or so, and then they're either too good or too bad. You know something that's so true, Raw Nook, because you know something? When you're like, this sounds dramatic, but when you're sort of like the heat of the battle of a drawing, it's really easy to have terrible judgment about what's actually going on. I, I think that's true. Like sometimes I'm working on a drawing, I'm like, oh, it's, it's so bad, I hate this. And then I put it away and then I look at it again. I'm like, that's pretty good. <laughs> or sometimes, have you guys ever done this? Have you ever worked on a piece? You're like, it's so good. And then you put it away and you're like, no, it's not. <laughs> like a week later. So the point that I'm trying to make is that oftentimes your judgment of the artwork as you're working on it is quite flawed. And so that's why you got to take time away and look at it from a distance. That's pretty important. Okay. So I feel like I have a better handle on that. I don't like this torso. I feel like I didn't get the, to like it's a little bit too straight. Um, I wonder if it's down here, like maybe the bulge is coming out a little too much. I don't know. I wanna put in a little more external oblique though. Cause there's like these like lines towards the bottom that I wanna get in. Just at the, I mean, I'm sort of gonna stop the drawing here because there isn't a lot going on but I feel like at the very least, I wanna show those skin folds towards the bottom like that. Okay, cool. Let's see, what do I wanna do now? I think I want to get more specific with the shadows and maybe pull out some of the shadows that are more dramatic, like the darker ones. So let me go in, I'm actually gonna use, I mean, I'm a big fan of purple for shadows because I think it's very easy with color pencils just to like pick the gray because it's there. But I think purple's great because purple has a lot of contrast. Like it's still a pretty dark color, but it has like a little bit of an extra punch, which I really enjoy a lot. Okay. Ooh, we got a lot of new names here that I've never seen before. Goblin Butter says hello from Oregon. Casey says, I love your haircut. Thank you very much, you guys. I was a little worried, but I love it. I wouldn't do anything. It's fantastic. And we have Dusty Git from Indonesia. Very cool. And Na Concreto is here from Chile. And Cole Pepe says, I recently got the opportunity to be able to skip a year in high school art class so I can take AP for two years. Do you think this would benefit me in the future? Totally. <laughs> I mean, I think it really depends. It depends on the teacher and what you do, but it's like if that gives you the opportunity to maybe have a little more control over what you're learning. You know, my impression of AP is that you do have more leeway and the projects are a little bit less like projecty 
project based. So I don't know what your school is like, Cole, but I mean, it sounds good to me. You sound excited about it. That's the most important thing, if you guys ask me. Okay. Angie says, I got a really cheap set of colored pencils from Walmart for less than 20 bucks. That really makes you work to see anything after two hours. Fabulous. I get that, Angie, because actually I got this a set of colored pencils that was really for me too dark for my taste. Like I happen to like them a little bit softer, but they were kind of nice because you almost couldn't mess up. Like they were so light <laughs> that you couldn't press down too hard. And I sort of like that about those. I do really like these Faber-Castell ones though, because they're soft, but not too soft. I know I sound like Goldilocks. <laughs> it's like very particular about my art supplies, but that's one of the reasons I like them so much. Let's see, Kainara, sorry, I don't know how to say your name. Hello from New York. I'm wondering where you get your reference photos. I'm assuming they are stock free, they're mine. I shot them myself. So pretty much everything you guys see which is on our Flickr page, I'll show you guys. This is our Flickr page. And if you guys go there, these are all photos I shot myself. So I don't have to worry about copyright and I can get better quality photos because honestly, you guys, if you try to find a good photo of a male torso that isn't like oiled up for some like tournament and bodybuilding, it's hard. It's hard to get some that are tasteful. And so the reference photos, they're in news in the Discord and also in the YouTube video description. And like I said before, we have a lot of stuff. There's dead trees, there's mushrooms, there's eyes, there's hands and feet and all kinds of things. I'm working on it, but it's a lot of work. And so I can only do so much at a time. Heather Brown says, I used to enjoy Buffy the Vampire Slayer. When Twilight came around, I was curious, but I thought I may be too old for it. So I never saw the Twilight movies. You know what, Heather, you're not missing. I love Buffy. Buffy was great. I watched all seven seasons of Buffy. I think it was the summer my daughter was born. <laughs> I was like spending a lot of time at home. I watched the whole thing. It was awesome. <laughs> Actually, if you guys have watched Buffy, tell me what's your favorite episode. My favorite one is Hush. The one where they couldn't speak and they had to like do all these stuff. It was really funny. So tell me if you like Buffy. Buffy's great. I really like that show. Okay, so I'm going to go in now with... Oh, actually, I should sharpen this a little bit better. All right. So Goblin Butter is saying bodies in motion is nice for reference. I have not seen that site actually. I'd have to take a look at it, but I'll be honest with you guys. A lot of the photos I see online are really bad for me. I, I don't like them. I'm very particular. I like the lighting to be a certain way. Sometimes the poses are really cheesy looking. And so that's why I'm shooting my own. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's build up some purple in here. Ugh, why is this purple so hard? I feel like this is harder than the other color. That's strange. It could, it could just be this pencil. Like sometimes you get these parts that are just like a little bit hard. Sometimes it varies from pencil to pencil. I gotta pick it up. I feel like I'm still drawing in a sort of slow, wimpy way. And I don't like that. I wanna kick butt. I mean, what's the point of drawing if you're not gonna kick butt? That's my whole feeling about it. Okay, let's just really build some of these forms. Like down here, you can see there's like a much darker shadow that protrudes. So I'm gonna pull this out. And then also like even the belly button, there's this pretty dramatic shadow that comes out, it gets a little bit thinner and then it gets wider again. Okay, so you're looking very carefully at the shape of the shadows and you're starting to pull things out. Like this is actually what I'm drawing right now. This is a top section of the external oblique, the love handles, which I was mentioning earlier. And then this is darker too. I'm still not looking that carefully, guys. I'm just sort of throwing it down. Eventually I will get there, but not right now. And does everybody see the reflected light? Like this is a beautiful reflected light, okay? I'm not saying I'm an amazing photographer. I'm just saying that when I take photos, I look for stuff like this. And oftentimes, a lot of those sites that you look at, they don't have reflected light. Like people don't bother to put in those things and you miss out on a lot. Reflected light makes things look so much more three-dimensional. Like if you add reflected light, it's like, it just adds so much bulge. It's awesome. So yeah, 
I mean, I haven't been able to take photos of nudes because of the pandemic, but I'm hoping when I'm in Salt Lake City, which is pretty soon, I'll be able to hire some models and get like some really good reference photos for you guys. Cause I know people are really wanting those. I just have a few right now. Like this is actually left over from our figure sculpture tutorial. So that's, that's why I have these, but I want to do more. I do have a lot of eyes and hands though. If you guys want eyes and hands, you're all set. <laughs> just head to our Flickr page, you'll be fine. Okay. This I want to dig in a little harder. So again, with colored pencils, you guys don't go on automatic pilot and just use the same pressure all the time. You don't want to do that. So even right now, I know you guys can't really see this, but I am changing my pressure. Like some parts I'm pressing a little harder, some parts I'm pressing a little lighter. So like here, I wanted it darker, so I'm pressing a little harder, but then when I get more into the highlight, I start to lay off a little bit. So don't just use the same pressure all the time. That little shift of pressure is pretty important, you guys, in terms of getting this to work. Okay, now this is like, I guess this is like a little bit of the pectoralis getting pulled out. It's a little bit stretchy. So let me pull this out a little bit more like that. See, the tricky thing with this stuff is you want all these shapes to flow. Oh, sorry, I didn't put the reference photos back. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay, here we go. That's a lot better. Hopefully you guys had your reference photo already and I wasn't too much getting in the way, sorry. So many little pieces to all these live streams. Okay, this I actually am going to get down a little harder like that. Push that like this. But see, that's why <laughs> you guys should download the photo because when I space and forget, then you don't have to rely on me. That's much better. Okay. Now, also the face, like you can see this whole section down here, it's very dark. You're trying to really group these sections and then maybe darkening some of these creases, still keeping the drawing really, really general, guys. Don't get specific just yet. You want it to be more like a painting than like a drawing at this stage, actually, because really what you're doing is you're, you're just laying down big areas of tone. That, that's more what you're doing than you are really drawing at this stage. Okay, maybe a little more sternocleidomastoid coming down. Oh yeah, Ray. Once more with feeling, that is such a good Buffy episode. It's this musical episode. And I, I lost it when I saw Spike sing. <laughs> it was like so good. Oh my God. <laughs> Let's see. Sam Cow says line of action is a good site. They have photos from different people and some are from Deviant Art. They also have a timer to time yourself while drawing. Okay, that's cool. And Blighted Angel says, I find a lot of free stock photos are too well lit. They are barely have any shadows at all. Yeah, that can happen too, because if you have too much light, things start to look really flat. So it's tricky. I mean, what I typically do, you guys, most of the reference photos that you'll see on our Flickr, they usually are natural lights. It's usually light from a window because natural light from a window, it really shows the form. Like if you guys use like a desk lamp or something that's very like strong and targeted, it actually doesn't make good shadows because the shadows are cast shadows and they're really harsh and flat. They look very graphic. So you'll notice in this particular reference photo that the shadows are soft, a big difference. I'll, I'll have to do a stream about that at some point so you guys really can see, because a lot of people don't realize like, wow, there's a big difference between whether you use a desk lamp or whether you use light from a window. But it, it can be tricky because sometimes if you don't know what to look for, it's not always clear how to actually shoot the photos. It does take some experience. It's not horribly difficult, but you do have to know what you're doing in order for that to work out. Okay, I wanna start to emphasize some of the like dark, dark spots. I think mostly because I'm getting impatient and I just want something that's more solid. And I do wanna pull this nose down a little bit more, like especially here, I just wanna give it a little bit more strength, I suppose. And in here too. I don't know, I feel like colored pencil just doesn't look that great for a long time. Like it really takes a while until it starts to really, I don't know. I guess you could say that about everything though. Painting's kind of the same way. It just kind of looks like crap <laughs> for like a really long time. <laughs> that is not unusual. Okay, I'm just darkening some of this 
space because so much of the space is in shadow. Very little of it is actually have actually has highlights in it. And actually, uh, maybe a little bit of the eye socket. I mean, I know this is like almost not even on the drawing, but I do think it is worth putting in so I just so I don't get confused because I feel like what I see a lot you guys can tell me if this happens to you too like I think oftentimes with human figures people leave out body parts because they say oh I don't want to bother drawing that but you know what? when you leave out body parts it actually makes your life more difficult because like here some people might say oh we'll just leave out the face the face isn't that important and I'm like yeah but the face helps me understand the clavicles better and so I can just put them in briefly and not focus on them, but they're, they're helpful. It's sort of like a little landmark that you can start to focus on here or there. Okay, that's starting to work out. And Emily says, I'm having such good fun. I don't know where my drawing is going, but I'm enjoying myself. Thanks, Professor Lou. That's awesome. You know, that's all that matters, okay? Who cares? Really, who cares? Like, what? tell me right now, what is the worst thing that could happen? Let's say you come to this draw along I say you bad drawing. What's the worst thing that could happen? Really, just think it through. Because I've had students get very stressed out about it. And I say that, well, let's just walk through. Really, what is gonna happen if you don't like your drawing? What really is gonna happen? Yeah, you'll maybe spiral down into the apocalypse. It's fine. <laughs> you know, it's like compared to other things, nobody's gonna starve if your drawing looks bad. You know, at least you've got that going for you. Oh, guys, I did not get the tilt. I'm not happy about not getting the tilt. That makes me feel sad. Crap. I don't know, because I'm always like, you know what bothers me as a teacher? I'm always like bothering students. I'm like, blah, 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 do this. Linear perspective. And then like, I don't do it. <laughs> Deepti told me the same thing. She's like, I always give people advice and then I like, can't do it myself. I'll tell you, it's easier to give people advice than it is to do it. It's, it's much, much easier to give advice. I definitely sympathize. I have the easier gig, in my opinion, like between teacher and student. I mean, yeah, I got to work my butt off, but it's different. Like, I, I think the challenges are much different because it's like I'm not doing something that's brand new and it's stressful to do something new that you don't have familiarity with. Right. I mean, look at how stressed I get during the procreate streams. Oh, my God. In that comic stream. Oh, God, you guys, I was so bad. I was so like, oh, my God. Kat's like, just do this. I'm like, I can't. She's like, Clara, you're like worse than this high school students I'm teaching right now. I'm like, sorry. I'm just like a really needy student. <laughs> like, I just need it. I don't know. I was always one of those students. Like, I just probably drove my teachers crazy because I was like, what about this? I don't get it. Wait, explain more. <laughs> but I don't know. I'm one of those people, like, I don't know if you guys do this, but when I read a book, I don't know if this sounds strange, but I have to hear every word out loud in my head when I'm reading a book. And if I don't do that, I don't understand it 100%. So I'm actually sort of a slow reader for that reason. I, I have to like truly understand something or I get really stressed out. And so I think that's probably one of the reasons why as a student I'm like that because I, I get like really stressed if I feel that I don't fully 100% understand something. But the problem with that is it takes me longer <laughs> to learn how to do stuff. That's what's really tricky. All right. Joe says, I tried purple for dark tones on my ballpoint pen drawing. My friend who is a fine arts grad says it's cute. Still don't know what she, you know what? Don't, don't listen to them. It's just, oh my God, people say the most annoying things about your artwork. It's just, it never really ends. <laughs> Scarlet T says, I love what you're doing. Learning a lot. Awesome. And if you guys are learning something that you're like, whoa, I never understood. Tell us in the chat, what, what are you learning? What are you observing? Because, you know, sometimes a lot of learning is just acknowledging like, oh, I saw this. I didn't know that before. And really what's cool about this is all you guys in the chat, you're together. You can compare notes. I mean, I really think in a classroom situation, you guys learn just as much from each other as you do from me. I mean, really. That's such a big part of the process is learning with the other people. So if you guys are learning something and you see something in the process or in your own drawing or whatever, tell us, tell us in the chat, what are you learning? What are you seeing that 
is maybe helping you or I don't know, maybe it's something you stopped doing. Uh, maybe it's some habit you had that maybe getting rid of it helped you or I don't know. It, it's, it's really up to you guys. You know, a lot of times students tell me things and I'm like, really? I never thought about it that way. <laughs> so it's helpful for me. It's great. Also, because I think the, the population that studies with me here is so broad. It's so much broader than any demographic that I ever had. And so it, it's really interesting for me because I feel like the population I used to teach before was a lot more homogenous. And this is very different. We have people from everywhere, which is awesome. I just love that. Okay, now what I think I'm gonna do, this is a brighter color. This is more like a pinky. I feel like I don't like, like, ew, this is really gross. I think I'm gonna go in and try to pump up some of the saturation because it's still, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna finish this, guys. I think we're gonna have to do a second screen because, uh, yeah, I'm slow. That this is not gonna get done. So yeah, we'll we'll figure out at the end. You know, maybe this is as far as you want me to go. But if you guys want me to finish it, I can do a second screen. I mean, you know, the best part about art prof and being on YouTube is I don't have to answer to anybody. I'm like, hey, you guys want to do this? Okay, let's do it. <laughs> it's great. I really like it. <laughs> then again, maybe it's just because I'm bossy. <laughs> like telling people what to do. I think that's a lot of it. Let's see. What are people saying? Kane Bravo says, the same thing happens to me when I read books. I have a lot of problems when I want to read in my second language. Oh man, second language is even harder. I mean, I studied in Italy for nine months when I was in college. I would get headaches at the end of the day from listening to Italian all day. Like it took that much concentration. And my problem with foreign languages is this is a strange problem is that I'm pretty good at speaking like I can pick up the speech pretty fast, but I'm not good at comprehension. And it's the opposite for a lot of people can understand more than they can speak, but I'm the opposite. And so when people in Italy, they would hear me talk and they'd go, Oh my God, you're like fluent. I'm like, no. <laughs> and so it was like a problem for me because like, People were always thinking I understood way more than I did. And it was just like, not easy. Cause again, it's like, if I don't understand them a hundred percent, I am like lost. So it's really difficult. All right, we're still doing a slow build guys. Okay. I mean, I feel kind of like a dork because I feel like we've been trying for so long and I'm not really showing you very much right now, but I mean, color pencils really like that. It's, it's not, something that you can really go wild on. I mean, it does get faster. I mean, once you get a significant amount built up, it will get easier. Like down here at the bottom, I'm really starting to work some of the pinks that are down here. And then another thing you guys will notice is that when I add a new color, I don't just put it in one place, I put it everywhere. So this pink that I'm using, I'm using it here, 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 and here. And so that's what keeps that color from looking like a sore thumb because sometimes like you'll look at a figure drawing and you're like Ugh, wh where is that green from and it, it looks like really bad and out of place and honestly it's because people don't spread it out enough that's that's the problem if you put it in too few places it doesn't blend that's the issue okay now what i'm going to start to do is actually putting in some blues like see this blue doesn't this look so scary but it's actually gonna help a lot because I feel like, especially down here, the color, it gets very cool. Um, and one thing that I'm always thinking about whenever I do figure drawings is I like to think about warm colors and cool colors, okay? So actually when I look up here, this is very warm. This is all like pinks and oranges, but actually the reflected light over here on this side, it's very cool. Okay, so you want that contrast. You don't want to just make everything warm. That's what a lot of people do when they draw the figure. They say, oh, it's like browns and peaches and all these different colors. And so therefore I just use warm colors, but you can't do that. You have to add these cool colors at the same time. So this blue that I'm putting on, it might feel a little bit severe, but I'm going to keep layering it. It's not going to stay that way forever, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But I, I do want to establish the, the coolness of that area that is going to help me quite a bit. Let's see, we've got some comments. Uh, Emily Vizareta says, I like how you apply one color at a time. 
because I usually just choose random colors I think would look good, but then it looks like a mess at the end. It's more that you just want to mix things more. Like the other day, I made this caramel sauce yesterday. Oh, it was so good. But it was one of those things where you have to like stir the sugar for a long time. But like, if you don't stir it, it gets all weird and rocky. And so it's sort of like that. Like if you don't stir it enough, the colors don't blend. And then you, you end up with something, oh crap. <sighs> of course that's gonna happen. Let me actually pull out, oh no, but I really like this blue. Like this is such a nice blue because it's this like very mild periwinkle. Like this blue to me is like, bleh. this is like phthalo blue, gross. Um, so th this one's a little bit more like of a lavender. So it sort of mixes better with that purple we were talking about. Okay. So yeah, I, I feel like doing that really, really helps. Okay, let's see what else people are saying. Gemini says, Italian is hard anyway. This is coming from an Italian. I know, but Italian's so beautiful. Like, oh my God, I just love listening to people speak. I, I feel that when I was in Italy, the way people speak, it's like they're singing. It's so lyrical. I mean, Americans are not like that. We don't do that. We're, we're so much more like choppy and coarse. I, I, I don't know, there's something about the way people speak Italian that it just feels very like rhythmic. It, it really is like an aria or something. It's, it's beautiful. I mean, oh, I love that so much about the Italian language. Sammy Time says, I'd love to say that your art videos make me so happy. I love art and learning. And this channel is such a good way to have some social fun and learn about something I love. That's awesome. Well, guys, I'm happy to hear that because um, I think, I suspect, this is just part of being on YouTube and having higher visibility, but I've been getting some nasty messages, <laughs> like not nice. And, and they're not like super ultra trolly, but they're, they're not like you suck. I mean, like that's obviously like really idiotic, but people who are like being really like really critical about very specific things. And I'm so offended by this, this, and this. And I'm like, ugh. So it's like a lot of the times you, you can tune it out. I mean, you have to, you can't listen to that all day, but I don't know, it's something the last few days I've just been getting more lately. Like, really? Like, it's like two in a day, two very specific, long detailed emails about what a terrible person I am. I'm like, really, you guys don't have anything else to do? I, I'd much rather rewatch Buffy the Vampire Slayer. That would be a much better use of my time. It's like, all right, yeah, so. I don't know. It's like people have no filter, but that, that's the weird thing is that some of the messages I was getting, they were from emails and they were from people who were definitely identifying themselves. And I was like, okay, <laughs> like I would never just write this email from somebody I'd never met or spoken to before, but I guess people feel the need and maybe they think they're doing a public service. I have no idea. Rachel says, I'm always so in awe of how incredible the blue looks. I need to get more adventurous with the colors. It's hard because I think sometimes you think about putting that color down and you just go, Ew. like uh, literally this happened to me. Okay. So when I was in art school, I was really bad. I was so bad at color guys. My color, my paintings were like gray. They looked terrible. And so I had this one painting teacher who was very good at color, but I thought I knew everything, of course. And so I remember this one day she came over and she was like, oh, I really want to help you with your colors. And she started painting on my painting, which is fine. I didn't care. I know some people care, but I didn't care. And so she starts painting like this disgusting green line, fluorescent stuff. And I, I was like so traumatized by seeing that color. But it's like in retrospect, I needed that. I needed to see a color like that to see what was possible because I wasn't doing that. I was making everything super, super gray, which was not good for me. So yeah, I, I get it. It's hard to make yourself use those colors because they really do feel like wrong, you know? Speaking of weird colors, let's get in some green. I definitely want to do that. Okay, cool. All right. Heather Brown says, using blue for the shadow areas has an interesting effect. I had a painting instructor insist that we use either green or lavender for Caucasian skin only. Well, I, I think green and lavender are fine. I, I don't know that you can categorize colors for different types of skin, especially because people are so different. I mean, even people who you think would be similar are not. 
So yeah, I'm, I'm not so sure that's fair to categorize like that. This is a great color too. This one I'm putting in right now, it's like a very olivey green. And I'm putting it again, sort of like on the side. And I do see it in here. So let's use it to maybe beef up some of these more subtle shadows. I think I need a little bit more, hmm, maybe I'll put a little bit of blue, this like navy blue, because this is getting a little too purpley. And I think I do wanna make some of these a little bit more pronounced like that. Maybe bring some more green down here. See, here's the thing, I don't even think I'm halfway through. Like seriously, that's how slow this is. Like I'm not even close because you know what I love doing? <laughs> I really like it in the end when I'm almost done and I can go like, like press really, really hard. Like I love that, but it's like, you can't do that till the very end. Very, very end. If you try to do that too soon, it, oh, you're gonna pay for it. So yeah, absolutely. But what I do wanna do now is build up this like ultramarine color, although it's more brown. I feel like I'm maybe making this a little bit too purpley, but I don't know. Well, we'll get to it because actually, one thing I would consider you guys is when you're doing these drawings, these colors we're putting on right now, this is not the final color. This is like way below the surface of where I'm eventually gonna be, but it's like, it's gonna be a while before I get there. So that's why I'm not that concerned. Although, you know what I do wanna put in? There's some beautiful reflected light on the arm and it's very orange. So I'm actually gonna pull out this disgusting orange color and I'm just gonna punch in some of these areas because I feel like that that is pretty pronounced and I don't wanna leave that for too long in there. Okay, let's see what else is going on. Jade Leaf says, the problem is internet gives some people too much freedom to be jerks with no repercussions. But see, here's the thing. It's like those people that send me emails, like I remember their names. So I'm going to remember. <laughs> like I definitely have like a list going on in my head. It's so terrible. <laughs> Timon Caesar says, I can speak three languages. I'm not quite good at English, but really wanted to learn more. Hey, three is awesome. <laughs> like I will take three for sure. Like that's amazing. So yeah. And Lauren says, I found this channel during quarantine. I really enjoy the content that we make. Thank you. Awesome. And Fab Geek says, wow, I never considered green on skin tone. I know you wouldn't because it just feels wrong, doesn't it? But you guys, next time, you have an opportunity to look at somebody without being a creep and there's like natural light, look carefully. You might be very, very surprised at what you see. It, it's really like, oh, what? Like once you see it, you're like, oh my God, like your brain just sort of explodes. It's kind of amazing. So I, I like that a lot. Okay, it's time to put in the rhymes with stipple because uh, YouTube once took down one of my live videos because I, I think, I think again, it was the butt crack. So, <laughs> so ever since that, I've been more careful about it. <laughs> okay, so there we go. And this one's a little more purpley. So maybe this like magenta color in here, just to make that shape a little bit more prominent. Again, this is so like not even close guys. Oh my God, not even. But see, so much of art is like that. So much of it is like, front work until you get to the setup. And then once you get to the setup, you gotta do this, this, and this. And so, I don't know, like, do you guys ever feel self-conscious when you're working on a drawing? You're like, oh my God, people who are watching me must think I suck. <laughs> like, <laughs> I definitely feel that way. Like when I would do drawing demonstrations in class, like I never did the whole thing because I was always working with students. And so I was just like, oh my God, they think I can't draw. This is like really bad. Okay, I think I definitely need green. See, the green is starting to look weird and creepy. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna distribute it more. Put it more in this area, let it be a little more prominent in some of these other spots. And oh, the things that drive me crazy. It's really bugging me. I feel like, I feel like it's the side. Maybe I didn't give it enough, like, let's see. Maybe there's not enough cheek on that side. I don't know, that, that shape is kind of bugging me. A little bit. Maybe more like that. 
I mean, I did not leave a lot of space for the hair, which I should have. But it's possible that maybe the white color pencil might help me out later. I'm not sure. It's, it's hard to say. But I do want to make the mouth more visible. Because especially this fold that, like, comes down the side, this is pretty dark. That's not really something I want to leave out. Like this. Okay, and by the way, you guys tell me, I am not gonna finish this tonight. Tell me in the chat, would you like me to do a second stream so that I can finish this, like really finish it? Or should we just end this one and do another thing next time? Because I did do that with my watercolor portrait. I think a lot of people really wanted to see the turnout of that. So tell me in the chat if you guys want a second stream on this drawing. Because while it is helpful, I think, to see the setup, sometimes people really just want to see the transition. Uh, actually, there's a lot of green up here. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> David says, I, I nailed those dipples. Okay, I, I guess that's what we need to call them from now on. It's kind of like, um, actually, this is one of my favorite things about the bots in Discord that censor certain things, is you guys know that big art supply store Blick. You know how they used to be called rhymes with ick, Blick? And so now in Discord, we have to call them Richard Blick because the Discord bot doesn't like their original name. So anyway, you can get um, creative with some of the things that the bots try to censor. Same thing here on YouTube. I mean, we have to come up with these words, otherwise we get demonetized, which always makes me sad, so yeah. Let's see, Yesenia says, that's the hardest part of drawing at home. I don't want my family to look at the ugly phase of my drawing. Oh yeah, for sure. I know it's like you feel embarrassed that it doesn't look that great. Yeah, like here too, I'm like, ugh, it does not look good. There, there's way, way more that needs to happen with this piece. So I think we're gonna go for a little bit longer and, and remind you guys also that we hang out in the Discord the invite link is in the video description below and we will go to the draw alongs channel. And if you've been drawing with me, which hopefully you have been, you'll post your stuff in there and we can look at what everybody's done. You can also tag us on Instagram, art.prof and use hashtag artprof share. But let's do a little bit more and then we'll see if I've got time to put in the second stream because there's usually some flexibility in the schedule. We'll see if I can fit something in there. I mean, my problem is I got too many ideas like oozing out of my head. It's like, I looked at our YouTube channel the other day. I was like, what the hell? We have over 600 videos and I'm not joking. I feel like I'm just scraping the surface. I feel like I'm just starting to have a bunch of videos. Like I, I still feel like my head is just spinning. Like I want to make a video about this and I want to do this and I want to do that. And it's just like, I don't know. I need to clone myself. Like otherwise none of this is ever going to get done. <laughs> I mean, even with the staff that we have, it's still like, I don't know, it's hard to, because you don't want to put something out that you think doesn't really represent what you're trying to say. And so it does take time, but yeah, I just, my head's just exploding with ideas all the time. I think I drive my staff a little crazy. <laughs> it's always like, Clara's got a crazy idea. You talk her out of it. <laughs> like, that's half of our staff meetings. It's like Lauren saying, um, Clara, you're being really dumb. So yeah, but you gotta start somewhere, right? And some of our crazy ideas work out, some of them do. <laughs> like we did, we actually canceled our Jackson Pollock stream that was supposed to be on Sunday. And we did a stream about that viral image that's been going around the internet of Kamala Harris with that reference of that Norman Rockwell painting, The Problem We All Live With. That was a crazy Clara last minute idea. And Lauren was like, oh, actually, I think this is a good idea. <laughs> I'm like, wow, first time. One of my crazy ideas is not totally over the top. <laughs> Let's see. What else are people are talking about in the chat? Insert clever name here says, I would totally watch a second stream. Same thing with Starling Artist Collective. And Carol Lipinski says, yep, I want to see the proper colors. Okay, cool. Let's do a little bit more, guys, because I think 
what I want to do is just get enough here in terms of the forms. Like I, I want to make this muscle here a little bit more prominent. And so that way, when I come back to this, I don't have to work as hard to get the forms. I mean, it's hard because you, you almost can't like do everything all at once because like part of me is like, you gotta do the muscles. And then I'm like, I gotta think about the color. It's a lot. So you know what I'm gonna do right now? I'm gonna switch gears a little bit. I'm gonna think less about color and I'm gonna think more about form. I'm gonna try to pull out some of the more dramatic shapes. And so right now I'm not thinking as much about color as I am thinking about value and about making some of the shapes more dramatic. I don't know. I mean, color pencil takes a while, guys. Ugh. Like for me, this is so slow. Um, it's, it's tricky for me because I'm not a patient person. Like I just want stuff right away and it's not easy for me to do that. Okay, I think I need, yeah, this is not dark enough back here. I feel like this is it's too pink. I want to make it a little bit more neutral. See, here I am telling you guys, I'm not going to work on that. And of course, here I am doing this. Actually, I think in the video, it's a little bit too bright. I actually think the colors are a little bit more dramatic than you can see in the video, but I'll post it in the Discord and then you guys can see the more accurate colors. It's really hard because with streaming video, the quality is just not that great. It's, it's very different than like our studio tutorials. We shoot those on like DSLR and so they look a lot better, but you know, you, there's compromises everywhere. Our studio tutorials just take so long to make and I just can't get them done fast enough. So yeah, okay, let me do, I feel like I need to subdivide this area. Like this is getting a little bit formless. So maybe a little bit more of this burnt sienna because I just want to show the direction of the muscle a little bit better. Starving Artist is saying, is it possible to group more of the similar streams into playlists? There's a few, but many great streams aren't. We have put together a bunch for the paint alongs, the draw alongs, and you know what, Starving Artist, if there's a particular category that you think we're missing, which I'm sure we are, just let me know, send me a message in Discord, or you, know, you can post here too. Um, because sometimes I don't always think about which topic is the best. In fact, I probably don't. So <laughs> let me know. I know it's, it's tricky. I'm always like messing with the playlist, but somehow it's like really hard to get them to exactly where they want to be. I don't know. It's really hard. Like I, I really thought that it wasn't going to be so much work to think of playlists, but it is, it's a lot of work because you, you never really know exactly like, what are people looking for? So yeah, if you guys have a category, for a certain playlist and you want us to do that, let us know. Because as much as I would like to think I know what's going on, I oftentimes do not. So I need you guys here to help point out the things that are gonna make things better on your end. Okay, let me just bulk in some of this. I'm getting denser, but it still needs a lot more. Yeah, because I don't know, I feel like the forms right now, they're pretty mushy. And I feel like the drawing in general looks too even. I don't like that. But you sort of have to start there. Like you can't start out, well, for me at least. I mean, it depends on the person. Um, for me at least, I, I have trouble doing that. So what I rather do is do like a very even version, which is what I'm doing right now. And then I can mess with it in the next stream. I can't really do that right now because there's not enough information. So let me just build up a few more like anatomical sections. So I feel like it's more organized. Like I need this pectoralis major to come out more. There's like these more minor skin folds that I'm missing. So really it's like subdividing. And then actually, yeah, like this form needs to be more pronounced. So you can also see you choose where to layer, like the degree of pressure with your pencil, but it's also like, how much do I build it up? Like I built it up a lot here, not so built up over here. And it's like, it depends, like how, how do you want to do that? And so you have to think about all those. Okay. So Tainly says, watching Clara's working stream really emphasizes the process, how something looks like it's not going to work come together. Yeah. I mean, I, I think you guys, what's really hard 
is that everybody wants the finished product, right? Like, who doesn't? It feels so good. It's just awesome. But it's like, it, it takes a lot to get there. And I think oftentimes people, they jump the gun. They, they try to do stuff to make their drawing look finished too soon. And you end up sacrificing a lot of things as a result of that. Okay, so you know what's really weird, you guys? So I've been working on this drawing for a while and I feel like I'm just getting to the fun part. Like, just like, I feel like everything I've been doing up until now has just been pure grunt work. Total grunt work. Like, it has not been fun until, like, the second stream is where stuff gets fun. Like, this is all just set up and getting things going. It, it's not easy to do at all. Okay, so that's not where I wanted to be, but I feel like that's pretty good. So what I'm going to tell you guys now is to meet me in the Discord. So you can join me in the Draw Alongs channel. The link is in the video description below. Subscribe to our channel and join the Arcraw family. And everybody, thank you so much to our top Patreon supporters who make everything possible. And I'm